So, Manchester United versus Arsenal on Sunday. Big game for both teams and we need to speak about it. And I'm going to cover a few topics here via my little sheet of paper here to, to keep me on track. Of course, Arsenal, they've won their last four games after that defeat to Aston Villa, which may end up being the all-important game when you look back at the title race. Manchester City just need to win their remaining games and Arsenal are hoping that they drop points somewhere in order to get back into that top spot and lead the pack. But ultimately, that Aston Villa 2-0 defeat may be the, the one game that lost them the title yet again for the second season running. Manchester United, on the other hand, very inconsistent. Got thrashed 4-0 against Crystal Palace on Monday. That was a, a horrific performance from start to finish. I don't think there were any spells in the game where we showcased a, an ability to maybe take the driver's seat or even get back into the game. It was total domination at Sellers Park. Fantastic performance by Oliver Glasner's team. And that just adds to the pressure that Eric Ten Hag has in the, in the press conference that just went by a couple hours ago. He was asked again. Uh, I think they were referring to uh, Louis van Gaal and how he had a difficult second season, ended up winning the FA Cup, but was still sacked. Eric Ten Hag is in a similar position where He's had a, a very difficult second season for different reasons, you could say. There were more injuries in this team that we can touch on yet again. But you're in a back-to-back -back FA Cup final lost year, last year against Manchester City. In this year against the same opponents, will, the, will there be different fortunes for the Dutchman and his squad? And we'll have to find out at the end of the day. But before we get there, we have to deal with the rest of the Premier League fixtures. And this one is the most difficult of them all. Injury news for Manchester United. Of course, we saw pictures of Rashford and Alessandro Martinez back in training. And the way, the interpretations that I took from Eric Ten Hag, speaking about Alessandro most importantly, is that, of course, you're back in training, but you have to be able to get back into match sharpness and, and get used to the intensity of the training sessions before you get thrown back into playing games and I know a lot of people will be asking questions because obviously rumor has it that Johnny Evans was asked to play despite not passing a fitness test against Crystal Palace we were short on numbers and he was asked to play for that experience it didn't work out anyway but uh yeah they were back in training I asked the question should they be in contention to play my thing is no <laughs> I would save Lissandro Martinez for the final most importantly um, I know there's still European football to hang on to. We have a game in hand on West Ham. We've played 36. We've played 35 currently. They have two games left. We have three with this Arsenal game. So they are going to be the ones chasing us to be in that conference league position. We're currently harboring that eighth spot on goal difference. Newcastle on 54 points with us too. And we, most of well, Ideally, would probably at this point of the season, with Champions League football being a, a, a no-go, we'd like to secure a Europa League spot, but we're going to have to rely upon things above us happening that would be fortuitous in our direction. Bruno Fernandes, I don't think we heard anything in regards to his availability for this fixture. Didn't play against Crystal Palace. Apparently has an ankle issue. So I, I haven't heard much about that. But I guess we'll have to find out. But we didn't get any questions or hear anything in regards to Bruno Fernandes. Luke Shaw, apparently, according to Eric Tanha, was desperate to be in this game on Sunday. But ultimately had a setback in his recovery from a muscle injury. He's been out since February, so he won't be in this game. And Mason Mount, who has just had a, a disastrous first season as a Manchester United player. As if people weren't questioning... His signing in the first place, obviously given the number seven, all of that stuff. He's had injury after injury. And after playing last game against Crystal Palace, it appears that he's had yet another injury setback. We don't know how long he'll be out for. It wasn't really discussed in depth, but he has been injured again. So Manchester United, my goodness, you have to question what is going on in those medical departments for the durability of our players to be absolutely in the bin. Something hasn't been right in terms of the preparation for this season, throughout this season, and the maintenance. Just not good at all. For Arsenal, 
on the other hand, and, and we're going to touch on a few things. Obviously, um, we've won the last two fixtures against Arsenal at Old Trafford. Um, back day in a, I think in our season. And of course, the 2021, where Cristiano Ronaldo scored two goals. Um, we, first and foremost, before I go even go into Arsenal, we could lose the most amount of games in a season since 1977-78, which is 19 games. We've lost 18 in all competitions. It hasn't been a good season at all, and I will continue to re-emphasize that. Eric Ten Hag wanted to kind of touch on the injuries and the adversities that they've been through. And he spoke about the fans and their reaction to the defeat at the Crystal Palace game away from home and how they were almost... They were, they were chanting, they were loud. As the players just stood there, they shook their heads, they apologised. They, they were ashamed, I believe. They should be anyway. But it, it was a... It was a strange moment, a strange reaction, you know, and, and Eric Ten Hag took that as them seeing what the team's going through and wanting to support them with every step. <laughs> and I hope that remains the same here at Old Trafford. We will see what the reaction will be after the result, hoping that it's a win. But obviously, Arsenal are highly motivated, needing to win every single game to make sure that they are close as possible to Manchester City in this title race. But speaking of Arsenal, there are a few topics I wanted to touch on. One of them was the emergence of Leandro Trossard as a starter with uh, Gabriel Martinelli, not in the best of form, suffering a few injuries, being in and out of the team here and there. He scored three goals in his last four and he's been quite the threat on that left side for Arsenal. I think he's been really good. Kai Havertz thriving in his new home as well. 12 goals, 6 assists in the Premier League. It's his best return since arriving at Chelsea, arriving in England in 2020. It's his best in return in the Premier League with, with all of those goal involvements. He's definitely found his new home and found a position. When you think about the injuries to Gabriel Jesus and, and the answers that Arsenal still need to find, there's a lot of talk within that fan base of needing to sign a striker that is going to be available. And that is going to provide goals and a lot of goals. Be one of those top goal scorers in the Premier League, near enough that 15 to 20 goal region, maybe even 25. They don't have that in Gabriel Jesus, even when he's fit. He's a creative player, don't get me wrong, but he's not a, a clinical out and out goal scorer. We saw that in his Manchester City days and we're seeing that yet again in his Arsenal days. But Kai Havertz, credit to him. In the positions that he's played, he's been playing kind of as a false nine uh, in that centre forward position. Sometimes in the midfield areas, he's come up with goals and assists. And as the season has gone on, his confidence has just got higher and higher. And that all starts from the trust that Mikel Arteta put into him and that, that Arsenal gave to him in order to bring him into the club and to rely that all of the, the money spent on Kai Havertz would eventually pay off and it is paying off currently when you look at the impact that he's having on the team with the likes of Martin Odegaard, Bukayo Saka, who's had a good season despite being visually hobbled in the latter stages of this campaign with the physical battering that he takes game in, game out. So there are a lot of things to speak about. I do think there are mistakes as good as that back four is by Arsenal but the centre-back partnership of William Saliba and Gabriel Magalhaes there are a mistake or two in Gabriel and, and David Raya even though he's got the golden glove credit to him there are mistakes in those two that have crept out in the last few weeks some of them they've gotten away with some of them not so much I mentioned that Aston Villa game I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a mistake in in that which which led to a goal but yeah, there are a mistake in those two. Will Manchester United be able to take advantage of those things we've seen all season long with the Red Devils is that they're not clinical within their front line. Rasmus Hoyland, you get brought in and I think the expectations, with him having such a hot start in the Champions League, it hired the expectations of what he should have been able to produce. Where For me, 
I always thought it would have... We were setting Rasmus Hoyne up to fail. Now, no doubt about it. As a player, you deserve criticism for the way you play. But ultimately, he's very green. He's not as skilled as you would want a starting forward to be if you're expecting 15 or more goals out of him in a season, which Manchester United need right now desperately. And there are more problems with the front line when you think about Anthony and his consistency. Amagiallo not exactly getting the opportunities that a lot of Manchester United fans would have hoped he would have got after a positive loan spell at Sunderland and little flashes off the bench here and there, but he only gets those little 10-minute periods to prove himself. Marcus Rashford, who's currently out injured, just returned to training, coming off a 30-goal season in all competitions, has suffered severely, struggled severely in front of goal and looks to be that player again that is lacking the imagination and the conviction on ball, off ball, in all scenarios. But that's a massive problem for Manchester United considering that we've been kind of hovering over that zero to minus goal difference (laughs) Uh, statistic all season long we struggled scoring goals and we've conceded quite a few Um, Alejandro Garnacho he's had his moments this season but there's still a lot of development to go in regards to him being relied upon as a consistent goal scorer consistent goal scoring threat all season long in a Manchester United in in a competent team that is there to compete for accolades for trophies and you know the rest so there are a lot of problems in the midfield as well. Casemiro, even though he's been kind of used as a centre-back in the last couple of games due to the amount of injuries we have in that defence, we're looking at him and, and just how exposed our midfield has been this season. Kobe Mainu has been caught victim of it recently too. Um, Bruno Fernandes obviously injured Mason Mount when you put in there Christian Eriksen the questions around his durability not exactly fitness wise but being able to play game in game out in the Premier League and him being able to cover spaces it's not exactly there at this point of his career and just the setup that we've adopted under Eric Ten Hag this season it has exposed our midfield and our defence on time time and time again on multiple occasions, which is where the confusion comes from my perspective as of why you haven't been able to adapt and change the way the system we've played with as the season has gone on. Because clearly you can see with the Manchester United team, full retention is not a strength. So when you push players forward in, in attack and we lose possession, there are going to be spaces to exploit for any team. And we've seen that, whether it's a Burnley or Sheffield United and Arsenal or Manchester City. Any team we go up against will be able to exploit the spaces in transition because we, we commit numbers forward, and but we also give away possession <laughs> on a high freq- frequency. So that has been the confusion from my side of things, why there hasn't been a level of adaptation and and an acceptance, sorry, from Eric Ten Hag and the coaching staff to to make those changes. We've been rather stubborn in in persisting with the way we've wanted to play, even though in, in the eyes of many, many fans this season, there's also been confusion in the way we've played and being able to explain and understand Eric Ten Hag's vision for this team and that may be because of the players that have been missing throughout the entirety of this season but questions will still be asked ladies and gentlemen so the question I will be asking towards the end of this video is what do you think the scoreline will be how do you think Manchester United will fare against this Arsenal team fighting to go for this title it most likely will go down to the final day and as for Manchester United They fight to keep their European dreams alive, whether it will be Conference League, oh boy, or the Europa League. No return to Champions League football for next season as the fifth spot will not be available for England in in the Champions League. And I don't think Manchester United will even get there in the first place with a few teams occupying those spaces above Newcastle, Aston Villa in fourth spot and Tottenham Hotspur. So, ladies and gentlemen, get your score predictions in the comments. Make sure you're hitting 
the like on this video, subscribing if you're new, sharing your friends and frenemies, sharing to your friends and frenemies, CM22 ENT. Watch out for the match reaction afterwards, and I will see you lots in a bit.